Wow, it's Sunday the 27th of December and we're in between Christmas and New Year. You know, the world says that very often these few days, everybody takes a bit of a dip down in their spirit and heart and mind because they've enjoyed Christmas, but now what do we do with these days? We want to get to the celebration of the New Year. For Christians, it doesn't happen at all because Christ is with us through every moment and he's with us today as we begin our service. So welcome to Harrow International Christian Centre. I believe that today is going to enrich your life. We will hear the truth of God's word and set our hearts in the right direction for the future. To God be the glory. Amen.
worship you, Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to your presence. We come to your throne room just in the name of Jesus Christ. He is the perfect Lamb of God. And by His blood, we have direct access to your throne room. Father, we come with grateful hearts. All throughout this year that is coming to an end, you've been with us, Father. You've been with us, giving us the strength when we've been weak. You've been with us, Father, giving us your word, that specific word that has lifted us in the midst of despair, in the midst of pain. Father, you've touched our bodies and you have healed us. Father, you have put us in a community, in a family, and we've heard your voice through the voices of our brothers and sisters so many times. Words of encouragement, words of direction. Thank you. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. He is our counselor. Thank you, Lord, for your word. You are speaking to us every day. Father, we also acknowledge that we have sinned against you, not only as individuals, but also as a nation. Forgive our sins, Lord. Forgive our rebellion. We've been moving you outside of our society more and more every day. Even when we need you more, we're just putting you outside of our spheres of influence. As a nation, forgive our sins. Have mercy on us. Have mercy upon humanity, Lord, in these difficult days. And Father, as we face the new year, we come together, and as Moses did in the Psalms, we pray to you. Help us to number our days every day so we may gain a heart of wisdom. We need your wisdom, Father, to live. We need your revelation so we can understand where to turn and when to stop. We need your Holy Spirit to fill us afresh every day so we are in communion with you and we are prompt to react to your direction. We need, Father, your understanding, your wisdom to see your purposes, not only for us as individuals, for, but also for our families, for our church, not only here, our congregation, but worldwide as well. Help us, Father, and give us that strength, not only to desire to do good things, but also to have the strength to act upon your word. Where we need to change, give us the strength to change. Where we need to relearn, teach us and bring to us your word and the help of your Holy Spirit. Father, we glorify your name because you have made a covenant with us that remains eternal. Thank you for your purposes. Thank you, Father, because you've chosen us just that when we are facing these difficult times, by your grace and your grace alone, may we be able to display to this world your wonders, your marvelous signs. We glorify your name in the name of Jesus. Amen.
from Acts 1, verses 1 to 11, the Passion Translation. Acts, to the lovers of God, to the Theophilus, the lover of God. I think I might have said that incorrectly. I write to you again, my dear friend, to give you further details about the life of our Lord Jesus and all the things that he, he did and taught just before he ascended, in, he ascended into heaven. He left instructions for the apostles he had chosen by the Holy Spirit. After the sufferings of his cross, Jesus appeared alive many times to these same apostles over a 40-day period. Jesus proved to them with many convincing signs that he had been resurrected. During these encounters, he taught them the truths of God's kingdom realm and shared meals with them. Jesus instructed them, don't leave Jerusalem, but wait here until you receive the gift I have told you about, the gift the Father has promised. For John baptised you in water, but in a few days from now, you will be baptised in the Holy Spirit. Every time they were gathered together, they asked, Je asked Jesus, Lord, is it time now for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He answered, the father is the one who sets the fixed dates and the times of their fulfillment. You are not permitted to know the, time, the timing of all that he has prepared by his own authority. But I promise you this, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will be seized with power and you will be my messengers to Jerusalem, throughout Judea, the distant provinces, even to the remotest places on earth. Right after he spoke these words, the disciples saw Jesus lift into the, lifted into the sky and disappeared into the, a cloud. As they stared into the sky, Jesus, watching Jesus ascend, two men in white robes suddenly appeared beside them. They told the startled disciples, Galileans, why are you staring up into the sky? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but he will come back the same way that you saw him ascend. From 
It's Sunday the 27th of December and I pray that you've had a great Christmas celebration and that you're ready to come to the word of the Lord this morning. I'm sure you are. Well, over the last few months, we've been looking at several things. Firstly, we looked at the promise of Christ's return, end time events. And then it naturally fed for us to begin to look at the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ as we embarked on our Advent adventure. And I found studying for those messages so stimulating in my spirit and encouraging in my heart. And I believe today is a tremendously significant day because I believe the Lord is gonna bring these strands of revelation together. And uh, I want to deliver something that I know is right from the heart of the Lord for you. Now, I do believe that we are, as a fellowship, sitting under a real tremendous, deep anointing of the Spirit as we come through these dark days and this pandemic. 
And it is because of the sense of the Spirit of God upon us that I want to take us to Acts chapter 1. And in Acts chapter 1, we are aware of the fact that the disciples themselves have walked through the darkest season of life they could have ever envisaged happening. What they expected never came to pass in that they expected the Lord to establish the kingdom in a short space of time. And Jesus had taken the time to instruct them about this. And in fact, when he appeared resurrected from the dead, you know that he spent about 40 days sharing with them about the kingdom of God. So they didn't have wrong concepts about the kingdom. They were limited in their understanding, but they were expecting the Lord to establish the messianic kingdom. But there was so much to be done before that could happen. And I'm sure that over those days, as revelation began to dawn on them and unfold in their spirit, there was a realization that the greatest task and the greatest purpose that God had for them was yet to come. And there is that sense in my spirit that that is a message for the church today, that our greatest days definitely do lie ahead because we've been called and appointed for such a time as this. And these are not just throwaway lines that we heard so many times. The significance is bearing down upon our spirit and our mind in these dark days that we are living in. So I remind you as we begin that they had seen the suffering of the Lord. The Saviour that they loved had been punished and bore our judgment upon himself in his body, not only in the way that he was treated and whipped and mocked, a crown of thorns put upon his head and his beard ripped out, but in the way that he was crucified on the cross. So if we begin by recognizing that these were the darkest days for the disciples, then we can have an understanding of just how immense that moment must have been when they saw the resurrected Savior. Everything in their mind and understanding changed in that moment when they saw Christ. And as we come into chapter one of the Acts of the Apostles, I think it should be called the Acts of the Spirit, really. But here we have several promises that are made. And I want to remind you that regardless of the darkness of the days in which we are living, the promises of God still stand for you and the promises of God for the future and for the church, they still stand today. So the first promise that the early church, the disciples received was there would come a moment when the Holy Spirit would be poured out upon them. Hallelujah. And remember, The very words of Jesus linking with what we've been looking at, John baptized with water. We recognize that John's message was a message of repentance. But one would come, I will baptize you, Jesus said, with the Holy Spirit. And then he said to the disciples to wait at Jerusalem until that had come. If ever there was a message for the church, to be aware of the fact that we cannot fulfill what God has called us to do through our own ability and our own spiritual strength. It's impossible. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and power in these days, more than ever. So for those who believe that the baptism of the Spirit died with the apostles once again, let me create Correct your theology and understanding. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And as this day is so significant, the Last 
Sunday of the year, I felt compelled to remind us that we must have a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so the disciples waited for the promise of the Lord to be fulfilled. And the angel then appeared and said to them, why are you looking intently up into the sky? Because the one who you've seen go in the ascension, which is recorded here, is the one who will return in like manner. And I love that line, why are you still looking into the sky? Because it's almost like the angel is saying, listen, you've heard the promise from the words of the, and the mouth of Jesus. Now, Go on with the task that he is commissioning and commissioned you to do. Hallelujah. And it's the same for us. We cannot look at what is going on around us and change our expectation or not have the expectation that the promises of God will be fulfilled. We must maintain that expectancy that every word that God has said, shall come to pass. And not only do the disciples receive the baptism of the Spirit, but they are also challenged to go on and preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. And friends, as we live in these days that are so difficult, that call of God still stands over your life and over the church in our generation. To be filled with the Spirit and to go on sharing the good news and to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. So there is a promise. It's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Secondly, in chapter 2, we can come to that passage and see that the promise was fulfilled, that exactly what Jesus had said came to pass for them in that moment. And I love the vocabulary because the Bible says that the Holy Spirit filled the whole house where they were sitting. We're confident that this house was a place that was very near the temple. And the significance of, of that is that they, when they eventually spilled over into the streets, sharing the good news in many different languages, they were right in the heart of where the message needed to be heard by religious people. Isn't that the same today? We can become so religious with what we do, but we're void and empty of the Spirit. What Jesus and what the early church was witnessing here was the fulfillment of why Jesus had to come. That he came not only to pay the price for our sin on the cross and to save us through his resurrection and to be at the Father's side in victory, praying and interceding for us, but also that the Holy Spirit might come. Because you can recall the words of Jesus, unless I go to the Father, the one who will come after me will not be able to come. So Jesus ascended that the Holy Spirit might be sent with a new birth experience into your life and that you might, may be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. And in that coming, you will find the symbol of, of fire, tongues of fire, rests, resting on each of their heads. What a link to the Old Testament promises. Fire will come and it will burn up the dross in our lives, but it will also empower us to fulfill the commission of God, to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Hallelujah. What a joy. And the wind blew, the pneuma, the breath of God breathed. And just as in the Gospels, when Jesus had breathed upon the disciples, so the breath of the Spirit was received into the life of every believer. I wonder today whether you've had 
an initial encounter with God and he's come into your heart by your spirit, by his spirit. But maybe this needs to be a new day for you. Just as it was a new day for those early disciples where they were baptized by the spirit. The vocabulary speaks of, of a sunken vessel, flooded, overwhelmed, with the water and so we are filled by the spirit as it is poured out into our lives hallelujah what a difference it makes to the disciples they'd not been able to perceive fully the things of the spirit but now they could what they couldn't see and understand they could now see and understand what they could never achieve of themselves they could achieve by the moving of the Spirit in their life. Oh, thanks be to God. Yes, the promise still stands. There is a baptism in the Holy Spirit for you to receive at the close of this year when we've been through so much. And that promise will be fulfilled. Jesus said to them, wait at Jerusalem until you have been baptized with the Spirit. And maybe as you come to the close of this year, a season of waiting upon God is just what you need to do in your life. As we see these things unfolding right around the world, nations changing, authority being, being rebelled against, disasters taking place all over the world, this pandemic, shortages of food will come famines, wars, rumors of wars, all these things take place. It is so important that the church of Jesus Christ is filled with his Holy Spirit and empowered for these next years to come and in particular for 2021. I couldn't conclude this message and it's a challenge to me also I humble my heart before you and, and say, I also need to be baptized again and afresh with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I love the fact that Jesus said, if you ask him for bread, he will not give you a stone. And he was saying, if you ask me for the Holy Spirit, that's what you'll receive in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And friends, as we move through the remainder of this passage, we now come to the truth. Thirdly, there was a promise yet to come. And if we moved into chapter two, we will find that Luke, the writer of Acts, under the inspiration of the Spirit, records the prophecy of Joel chapter 2. And it is in Joel chapter 2, the prophet said, I will in the last days pour out my Holy Spirit upon all flesh. If you go through that passage of scripture, it's from chapter 2, verses 17 down to 21. You will see that the emphasis is on the activity of God himself. Oh, the church has to be in action. The church has to be serving. The church has to be reaching out and preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and seeing men and women saved. But the activity of God through the Spirit moves to a whole new level in this fulfillment of the prophecy of Joel. Well, the first thing I want to say is this. Once again, in the prophetic understanding of things, there is the Im immediate fulfillment and then there is a, a futuristic event yet to come. And that's a prophetic principle that I've taught you over these months. And the fulfillment is this, that in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Actually, it began at Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came. 
But there also is an element of end time outpouring yet to come. And the Spirit of God has been bringing this alive in my heart and mind again as we walk through these days of sickness and death. That the Spirit of the Lord will be poured out upon all flesh. And the Bible says here, he is the one he will do, who will do it. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. And he says, your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Hallelujah. I still think I'm a young man, <laughs> but in reality, I'm not. But the visions are still there and the dreams are still alive and the hopes and the expectation that what God has promised will come to pass. And the I will, the action of God is all the way through these verses. I will show wonders in the heavens. I will show signs on the earth. Now, we know that the outpouring of the Spirit took place. But that last days is all the way through until the second coming, the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not going to go into times and seasons, the rapture, the end time, second coming, all that. I preach the series on that. So we're not going, that's not the emphasis in this passage for me in this preach. But what we recognize is there's been a fulfillment and there's a fulfillment yet to come. Mark my words. Just like the disciples had been through the darkest days, as we walk through the darkest days, I tell you, church, our expectation should be that the Holy Spirit will be poured out, not only on us as a fellowship, not only upon you and your family, but also right around the world that it would be a returning to God, that salvation would come. And that's the other aspect. If you jump right to the end, you'll find out. It says, and all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is a day for salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off, my friend. Make your prayer of repentance and receive Christ into your life. But there's an element here that is yet to be. It's yet to come. Because in verses 19 and 20, these are verses that speak of the very end. And these verses, when we see them, tell us the end is closer than it's ever been before. Right at the midnight hour. And this is what it says. I will show wonders in the heaven above, and signs on the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness, the moon to blood, before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. Friends, let's be open and honest about these things. Those are hard images to get your head round and to fully explain in human language. So I think it's best to fall back on the simplicity and acceptance of what God is saying. That this describes a period of time when natural things that we have taken for granted will be shaken, will be changed. And we're seeing the buildup of that in our generation and time. But mark my words, these days shall come. But for the Christian, we just look up. Because when we see these signs, it tells us one thing. The coming of the Lord is nearer than ever. Friends, as I close today, we're closing 2020. A year we never expected to live like we've had to. The disciples never expected to live how they had to live without the physical Christ present. 
But they went on with expectation that the promises of God still stand today. For the promises of God are yes and amen. Yes, they'll happen. And amen, so shall it be. And so as I close today, I want to encourage you. Open your heart and life. No matter what you've been through. And be filled with the Spirit. If it's for the first time, then it will flood your heart like never before. And as the early church, you may well speak in a language you've never spoken in before. A language of prayer to heaven. He who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks unto God. Hallelujah. Nobody in a different theological view can say to me that we don't need the Spirit now and that we don't need a prayer line to heaven. Ah, yes, we do. And elsewhere, the word says, be filled with the Spirit, speaking in songs, psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, speak in the Spirit. And now, finally, let there be an expectation for the future, not only for 2021, that even though we are seeing what we are seeing, don't let the negative expectation of the spirit of the world and the spirit of the age and the spirit of the enemy rob you of the expectation that everything that Jesus has promised shall come to pass. Every personal word you've received, receive it in the name of Jesus. Every word that you've seen in scripture, receive it in the name of Jesus. And every prophetic statement from the word of God concerning what will be in the future, believe it and expect it, for it will come to pass. You know, the greatest thrill of my heart as I close today as a pastor and as an evangelist is the final verse, verse 21 of Joel's prophecy. And all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Friend, if you are not ready to meet Christ, if you've lost your way in the darkness of sin or the darkness of all that's happening, make your way home, just like the prodigal son, and ask Christ into your life. And by asking Christ into your life, let a new expectation for 2021 be birthed in your heart. Not only for this coming year, but for every year you have left that lies ahead. And eventually, with the expectation that the Lord shall return. Church, be blessed today. Be encouraged today. Set your heart and your mind in the right place and expect everything that Jesus has promised to come to pass. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.
service today, I'd like to speak to you personally. Firstly, I'd like to thank you for tuning in week after week after week as we've come through a time when church can't be what we always want it to be. Thank you. Secondly, I'd like to thank you for your faithfulness to Jesus through this year and express my confidence that you will also honour him in 2021. And then I'd also like to thank you for all the lovely messages, the WhatsApps, the emails, messages in through the website and on to our services as they come in live. Thank you for your encouragement. It has been such an uplifting experience to receive them. Now, finally, friends, I think I need to lay a challenge in our hearts for this year. Let's make it a year of change. We believe that we will see change and that God will deal with this pandemic however he chooses to do that. 
but let's believe God together for a change in our nation. These things have happened to bring us to our senses and to allow us time to assess, evaluate and think about where we are spiritually. Let's make 2021 a year to return to God's way. Not only in our own lives, in the way that we live, and the way that we worship with all of our hearts, but also as a nation. May our government, our MPs, may there be a revival, a spiritual awakening, and an awareness that we must return to worship the true and living God and Him alone. O oh Lord, let it be for your glory. Now may the love of God, the peace of God, the presence of the Master. May it be all over your family and your heart. In Jesus' name, amen.